Well, the market is closed for the week and everything was up except Tesla. So the S&P and the Dow and the NASDAQ all up for the first time in four weeks. And uh, that's kind of surprising in a way or not. We'll talk about that. We'll talk about the big week for Tesla and so much more. This is Randy Kirk. Uh, this is the regular Friday night edition where we talk about what happened in the week previous um, and uh, hopefully this is content that is important to you and valuable to you. And if it is, you know what to do. And uh, we are, of course, looking for more folks to join Patreon and be part of our new our new news effort. If you didn't see my video earlier this morning, please check out the video. We are looking for some folks to help us launch a news website, if you will, that will help people get immediate and accurate news about Tesla and everything Elon Musk. All right, moving right along, let's take a look at the last week. And of course, the first thing is that the, the market was up. Um, there was mixed economic news all week. Of course, isn't, there, isn't that true of every week? But in this particular uh, situation, the market is a little bit moody <laughs> and it's uh, kind of looking for a direction, doesn't know quite what to do. And so you have pundits throwing out all kinds of ideas. What in the world is going on with this, uh, with this market cycle? How do we get out of it? How do we march forward? Um, and so you, you, there's, a, there's a theory of the week. Well, the, the most recent theory of the week is that we're now going through uh, a no landing environment. So no soft landing, no hard landing, but no landing. And they're also referring this to as a some, not everybody, of course, some are calling it a moving recession. Now that makes some sense. And I think I can almost buy into this because you know I've been talking for a, a months and months now um, about my own theory about what's taking place in the market based on years and years and years of studying recessions is that this is completely different than any other recession in my lifetime. And that's a long, long, long time. Um, and that the that you can always find out what was the trigger. In this case, we know that the trigger, of course, was COVID, but we had the COVID big V, which was uh, something that I predicted at the time, which was that the response would be extremely uh, dramatic in the opposite direction once it bottomed out. And in fact, I made a lot of money off that bounce. Um, so uh, after that, though, you have a situation where you got into a boom bust problem. And so you had shortages of raw materials. You had shortages of finished goods. You had shortages of containers. You had shortages of freight capability. You had shortages of labor. You had shortages of cash. Not very much of that. Actually, it was the opposite. Lots and lots of cash. Um, so there was uh, all of these shortages and changes within the economy. And the demand was chasing these shortages because people go, oh, no, I, I'm not going to get mine. And and so that would drive prices up and and there was never enough labor. Um, so this was a very, very confusing market over this last uh, year and a half or so since the quote, quote unquote, end of COVID. Um, and so what we've seen is, is that this market is trying to settle out from all of this. And the, the government, the Fed, and others are trying to throw out directions and approaches and methods that might stop this craziness. In my opinion, none of that's going to stop anything. What's going to stop it is you just have to work through it. There's, there's, you can already see commodities coming down. Uh, we'll talk in a minute, even lithium is way down. You see oil kind of uh, moderating, kind of in the middle, which is one of my keys that I watch for. Um, all of these kinds of things have to work their way through the system to the point where you have kind of a balance between availability of raw, of raw materials, finished goods, services, compared to what the demand is for these things. When you're in relative equilibrium again, I think you'll find that the inflation will go away interest rates will come down to something that is more realistic uh, in our current environment with an aging population. I think that's probably going to turn out to be uh, maybe on average around a Fed rate or a 10-year bond rate of around 2 to 3% with uh, mortgage rates probably in the 35 to 4% rate. So th that's where it's going to settle out, but it may take a whole other year before that takes place. That's just my theory on all of this. 
so many things can happen in the interim that could throw all of that out the window. Uh, and you start over with a completely new theory because a new war starts or a uh, really bad disruption in some industry creates chaos. Okay, so that's where we are this last week. Why was the market up? I call it itchy fingers. I think that there's, there's again, uh, I'll wait for Kathy uh, tonight to tell us, but, uh, and I didn't look it up. I think there's probably more money on the sidelines right now than there has ever been on the sidelines. And then some additional money came on the sidelines the last two days because of Silvergate uh, and people pulling out of crypto. So you've got a lot, a lot, a lot of money on the sidelines chasing opportunities. And bonds are no fun. It may be stable. They're maybe paying a lot of uh, interest right now, but it's just not fun for the investment community. They're looking for something that's more fun. <laughs> so itchy fingers, I think, is what drove the market up this last week. Um, and there's a new um, trigger, uh, which causes people to run and go crazy, which is the 4% level on 10-year bonds. Be paying very careful attention to that. Uh, you know my theory. You watch the 10-year bond. Right now, that 4% is going to be the key. If it goes above 4%, watch the market go down. If it goes below 4%, watch the market respond positively. If it gets back down to 3.5%, the market will just go crazy, which then will say that <laughs> inflation will go crazy, which will drive. Anyway, you know the, you know what I think. I think you know what I'm trying to say. So, um, uh, but as the Fed gets more involved and we get more increases, another 25 basis, another 25 basis, we may see that we get past that 4% and stay above that 4%, which will dampen the overall market and at some point potentially affect inflation. Talk way more about that tomorrow when I give you my review of Kathy Wood's comments tonight. All right, so let's see here. What else? Um, talk to a CPA today who says that many companies are hurting. And this is particularly true of the trades and the services that are, 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 are uh, you know, uh, associated with the trades, the raw materials that are associated with the trades. So, you know, no, everybody got their house fixed <laughs> uh, over the last two and a half years. This is, again, the boom bust idea is that, uh, you know, everybody had all this money. They had nowhere to spend it. So they went and got their homes repaired. They got ad additions put on their homes. They got all this work done. And now they're done. There's, 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 there's not a lot of demand to get more work done on personal homes. And so the trades are going, uh-oh, where's, where's, where's my next paycheck coming from? So the trades are being uh, harmed right now. Uh, watch for that movement of that population out of uh, doing that kind of work and finding steady uh, steady income, going back to getting a paycheck, uh, because what? Because there's so many jobs available and uh, getting out of an industry that is uh, unpredictable is what happens every time that we're in this circumstance. So watch for some movement of people out of the trades and into uh, uh, regular 40-hour jobs. All right. Um, so housing is dead stopped. Uh, don't look for any significant decreases in pricing in housing, probably a little more here and there, depending on the market. Uh, but there just is no inventory. So there's not going to be a lot of drop in the pricing. But there's not going to be a lot of people um, rushing out to buy a house. Uh, even as we go into the season, um, people know there's no inventory and they know there's high interest rates. Um, and so people are going to be looking for excuses not to buy. There will be a, a normal, very large actually number of people that will move and that will buy a house um, and it will go up as we go into March, April, May, June. It always does. Um, even in really bad years, it always goes up during those months. So look for it to be for it to happen this year, but uh, to be very much muted this year. Um, <clears throat> rents, there's some evidence uh, just this last week of rents decreasing just a little bit. There is a lot of rental housing brand new rental housing coming in the market. Again, it's going to depend a lot on the territory. Northern California, rents are coming down substantially, but they were so high to begin with. So um, I don't think this is going to be huge, but there could be a little bit of moderation in rents. Um, okay, so those are the main things that are happening, I think, in the general economy. Um, 
it sets us up for a continuation of the rally on Monday without any significant news over the weekend, uh, but there will probably be a continuation of the rally on Monday. But as the news develops during the week, if we see strength, 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 uh, the market will start to collapse again. It will certainly collapse if bonds go over four. All right, so what, uh, what did we find out about Tesla this week? Oh my gosh, we could spend an hour on that. I will run down the list rapidly because this is not a news channel. I'm trying to only concentrate here on Friday night on the news about Tesla that I believe will affect the stock or should affect the stock long-term. Okay, so number one, by far, the number one thing that happened on Wednesday, the number one thing that happened to Tesla this week, and anybody that tells you differently is not really an analyst. The number one thing that happened is Tesla declaring that there are no limiting factors. This is huge. I did a whole uh, YouTube video on it earlier this week. Check it out. The fact that they have their raw materials, batteries, all the materials that they need, all the factories that they're going to need, everything is lined up in order to do their 20, 000, uh, 20 million cars uh, in 2030 and to do one terawatt of energy in 2030. It's all, all lined up. It's just a matter of execution now. This is the biggest news of the year. It might be the biggest news of the time that I've been covering Tesla. They've never had unlimited uh, uh, availability of materials to be able to run up their project. The projects are all in place. The engineering for the vast majority of it is done. Yes, there'll be little engineering tweaks and things that need to be done, but the engineering is done. The 4680 engineering is done. The, probably the most of the engineering for the new uh, car is done. We, we, we'll talk about that in a second. Um, the engineering for the cyber truck is done. The engineering for the semi truck is done. All of the engineering is in place. I'm guessing the HVAC, the engineering is ready. They just don't have time to start building the factory. You saw the robots, the advertise, the, the engineering is hugely done. Okay, so there's no limiting factors. And we know that Tesla executes. They have a history of executing. The times when they haven't executed is when there was engineering roadblocks. I don't think there's any engineering roadblocks. So there's nothing to stand in Tesla's way with regard to the core capabilities that they're looking to produce over these next years. The one exception to that is, of course, RoboTaxi. We'll talk about that in a second. Okay, number two, the 50% less expensive car, the $25,000 car, Tau, whatever the name is. This now we know includes multiple variants. We know that these variants will be drivable. And we know that we can look for first outs probably the end of 2024. That we know that these first outs will probably be in the New Mexico facility, but they might be popping out at exactly the same time in Shanghai, in, in uh, Austin, and in Berlin, because they will be made in all four factories. So we know that these are coming. We know the timing. We know where the factories are going to be. We know that they've done, that they, they've already got, they laid it out for us in detail how this car is going to be made or the platform is going to be made. What they didn't give us, which everybody got all excited about, including me, I was so sad that there was no picture to look at. But the truth is, they'll solve the picture. The picture will be the easy part. The engineering and the ability to manufacture it is what's key. And they've said, look, we've done that. It's done. Here's how we're going to do it. Here's the specifics. We've accomplished it. Done and done and done. Okay, that's really, really big. Number three, there are more Tesla Megapack factories planned. Uh, we knew that. You can't get to one terawatt, which is, the, which is the plan. That's part of master plan three. You can't get to one terawatt unless you build more factories. But we got it stated out loud. There was emphasis on the Megapack factory at this uh, investor day the other day. The fact that there was emphasis should be a clue to you that this is important to Tesla and there's a lot of energy going into this, <laughs> so to speak. And, and the, um, the, the fact is, is apparently it's not going to be an expansion of, uh, of the Lathrop factory because the statement was copy-paste We've built the one, now we know what, how to do it, 
And now we're going to build more factories. Where are those factories going to be? Mexico, Austin, someplace on the East Coast, Canada, Indonesia, um, uh, Japan, um, India, <laughs> Australia, um, some of these places where there's raw materials are, are abundant. Not sure. But what we know is more factories are coming. And that, again, is huge. Every single 40 megawatt hour megapack factory is almost the equivalent in profit to one first phase of Austin or Berlin. Keep that in mind. Okay, number four, the optimist is coming way sooner than people expect. I'm going to do a big video on this this afternoon. Uh, we may throw it up raw if it's really good. Uh, so that could come as early as this evening, or it might come out tomorrow. Whichever way, um, it, it's going to be another one of these videos with uh, uh, certainly with, um, uh, uh, it, might, it may include uh, Dr. Know it all, John Gibbs, um, and Scott Walter for sure is going to be involved. Uh, we're, we're not 100% sure whether Dr. Gibbs can uh, join us, but uh, we're going to do this and, and we're going to show you uh, for clearly that this was not a CGI video. Um, and we're going to talk about what we, why we know that this is going to happen quickly. And besides, Elon gave us the wink and the nod. It's coming soon, all right? I'm saying 2024, there will be a line that will start to produce. It may only be a pilot line, maybe or maybe not. This will be something that will uh, result in um, sales to the public. Maybe it will all be for internal use, at least initially. Uh, but you can count on the fact that it's coming as fast as Tesla can do it. Uh, and this is a passion object. This is something that Elon is personally dedicated to, involved with, and desires to get done quickly. Uh, number six, uh, the uh, Mexico factory appears to be twice the size of Austin. So the big news should be, oh, <laughs> here's the next gigafactory. That should have been enough to raise the stock price. Uh, the fact that it's in Mexico, eh, yes, no, it's, it was one of the locations that everybody was talking about. Uh, but so the Mexico factory is in place. They want to put it up in nine months. They want to make the first car in nine months. This has been stated. And it looks like it's going to be double the size of Austin. Now, does that mean it'll be double the size from the get-go? Or does that mean, like Austin, they might make an Austin-sized factory and then build another Austin-sized factory next to it? Nobody knows at this point. But from the renderings that were shown, it looks like it's twice the size of Austin. That could make an awful lot of Gen 3 vehicles, <laughs> okay? Um, the 4680, number seven, the 4680 is progressing and they have the luxury at Tesla of doing A-B testing on the line right now because they have plenty of batteries. Let that sink in. They are not rushing to get the 4680 line finally finished because they have plenty of batteries. And that means they can get the 4680 line really dialed in great with the optimal methodology being used. I think this has mostly to do with the dry powder coating. And then when they've got it on the first line optimally dialed in, now they can do line two, three, four, start building lines five through eight, start building line one through four up in, in uh, Reno, and then uh, begin with Berlin. So um, yeah, this is this is big news. It could be number one. Uh, but it's it's uh, we I'd like to see just a little more detail. This will be number one news when they tell us that the first line is 100% cranking. Okay, <clears throat> number eight. Only one terawatt of energy storage, not 1.5 terawatts of energy energy storage, was what was put into Master Plan Three. And so, what does that mean? Um, Warren Redlick was all upset about that. He says, "Oh, that messes up my napkin math." Uh, so Warren, I, I've been telling you for months now that your napkin math is not going to work because the price and the and the energy density is the energy density is going to going to go up. The price per uh, terawatt hour is going to come down. Uh, but I believe that the reason that the uh, total number of terawatts is coming down is twofold. Number one, they're not going to need as much by 2030 because of energy the density going up. 
the capability, the efficiency of the batteries going up. But number two, they're going to need a lot of batteries for semi truck. Um, I'm I did a video this morning, uh, an interview uh, with an expert out of Europe. Uh, that video should be up tomorrow sometime, uh, where we talk about the Tesla Semi is twice as efficient as Volvo, uh, and there's way more on that video. So um, we'll talk about that tomorrow, but I'm just saying there's going to be at least a million uh, 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 Tesla Semis being made by 2030. That's completely out of my brain, out of my heart, out of my analysis. Tesla has not said any such thing. All they've given us is that they're going to be mailing 50,000 next year. They have not said anything beyond that. So it's 100% Randy. And basically, nobody else even agreeing with me. I'm out on a limb by myself. Don't sell it off. A million units per year by 2030. Oh, I'm sorry. That's absolutely not true. I do have uh, my buddy, uh, Brian Wong, uh, who absolutely believes it'll be more than a million. So the two of us, he's a little further out on the limb and I'm just sitting right behind him. Um, so yeah, Brian, thank you. You were actually the one in this particular case to go out on that limb first. Okay, number nine. Um, I already said the market was up for the week and Tesla was down. Okay, why was that? Well, Tesla had a massive run-up since the beginning of the year. Uh, time for a breather. The only thing that could have get, kept it going really crazy is if they'd if the investor day had fed the masses. It didn't feed the masses. It didn't even feed me for the first hour or two. I've been sitting there going, I already know all this. Well, yeah, I know all of it, but the, the public doesn't know. So um, all of this was necessary. The foundation pieces being laid was necessary on Wednesday. Yeah, they took too long to do it. Yeah, there was a lot of information that everybody should have known. The reality is um, the folks, the retail investors that are not really committed, not really in it, the ones that are playing on a, uh, in and out, that are doing day trading, uh, the folks that are just kind of like looking for the next great thing to invest in, um, it wasn't what they were looking for. There was not enough kibbles and bits. And so, um, so it took a little haircut. Big piece of that haircut got put back today. Um, I would anticipate that over the next three weeks, we will probably start running back up into the 140 to 150 territory. I'm sorry, 140, 240 to 250 territory. Of course, you know we're headed to 400. I think we're headed to 400 this year. That will take a few pieces of news and a couple of earnings reports. But I'm saying as we as we approach the end of March. Uh, and go into the beginning of April, uh, we should be heading into the 250 range in anticipation, quite frankly, of the earnings report for the first quarter. Okay, uh, number uh, 11, we heard the news that the Cybertruck is still coming this year. Uh, that really wasn't news. That's why it's so far down on the list. They've been saying it's coming this year. It's coming this year. It's coming this year. How many times do we have to hear it? Uh, they put a, a beautiful, they you know displayed it at the uh, at an, uh, investor day. And everybody talked about how much more amazing it looks in person. And then they sent us a picture of it or a video of it as if the fact that they can see it in person would help us see the video. Make Anyway, you, uh, I, I'm not sure exactly what they're hoping to do. Anyway, um, the Cybertruck is coming. And when the Cybertruck comes, um, it's going to be a, a, a big catalyst to the market. Um, after the first reviews come out, it's going to be a big catalyst to the market. You can just count on that. Um, Nobody's counting much in for, nobody's really counting Cybertruck in on their numbers. It's crazy. It's crazy. The Cybertruck alone, if it was a standalone company, would probably be worth about 40 billion, uh, uh, maybe 100 billion, probably 100 billion with the kind of backlog they have. And with the fact that we've already seen dozens and dozens of prototypes. Yeah, I'm sorry. It's probably 100 billion or more, even in this market. That's what Cybertruck would be worth. Once it hits, once we got reviews, once we really know what it can do, once we really know the price, um, I think the market will go a little crazy. Okay, number 12, Corpus Christi has a 50 uh, gigawatt hour capability. Uh, it will be producing in one year. Um, and uh, the cathode factory, there'll be a new cathode factory that will also have a 50 gigawatt hour capacity. I could have that wrong, it could be 40. 
Uh, anyway, on the same property, they're going to be side by side. Uh, both of those are being built rapidly. They also mentioned that the cathode factory in Austin is almost finished and should be producing here in just a few months. Finally, number 13, we have 13 on the list today. Okay, so um, I'm still saying $400 in 2023, $700 in 2024, and those two numbers will happen unless FSD is solved. If FSD is solved, obviously the market could go much stronger than that. Uh, it would have to be solved in a way that is obvious to every to the vast majority of the investing public, uh, but then who knows what might happen to the, to the, to the stock. Um, and then if it's solved in a way that is obviously going to open it up to, uh, to um, uh, robotaxi use, uh, that's a whole nother uh, level up. And then the other thing that could really move the market this year is if they do a reveal day for the Optimus um, and then start taking orders. <laughs> so will that happen in 2023? If they're going to have a pilot line in 2023, they could have a reveal day in 2023. Maybe the reveal day will not be until 2024. I'm saying absolutely it will be revealed by 2024 and they will stay, start taking orders. I think they're going to take orders that will be in combination with applications. I think the first shipments of Optimus will only go to factories and industrial use cases where, where, where Tesla will be in a quasi-partnership with the person making the purchase so that they can field test and field involve themselves uh, as these are, are put out uh, into actual use cases. So that's uh, if that happens, when that happens, and they show <laughs> optimuses in multiple, multiple use cases, uh, the stock could go to a thousand. Um, <laughs> I could go to 1500. Um, uh, as Elon has said, um, the TAM is at least maybe seven or 8 billion units and nobody's even in the ballpark of uh, making what Tesla is making. I have said enough. I've taken enough of your time for today. Like, if you liked it, subscribe, um, set up some, uh, some notifications because uh, there's a couple of videos coming up in the next 24 or 48 hours that you're going to want to see. Um, and uh, then uh, uh, certainly go to, uh, to the Patreon and join Patreon. And then maybe you want to be one of the founders of that new news project that I'm putting together. That's going to cost you $50 a month or $100 a month, whichever one you prefer. And then you'll be listed on the founders page. I need about 50 people, 60 people to do that in order to fund this new opportunity. Hey, it's been great talking to you.